one thing I will say is I wake up starving. I'm pretty much starving all day to be fair. You don't say. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Paul. I'm a former personal trainer and nutritionist. In today's video, we're gonna be critiquing former world's strongest man, Brian Shaw's fat loss diet. I'm working on a personal transformation. So I'm trying to get leaner. I'm trying to get more athletic. From a health perspective, of course, that's extremely wise. I'm not sure what weight he is now, but back when he was competing, he got to over 400 pounds. That's very obviously not good for the heart. From a longevity perspective, eating excess calories is not cool either. Starting out with needle number one, love the trifecta. These are uh, pre-cooked bison patties, and then I'll, I'll go until I've got six ounces of meat. With this meal as well, I get uh, six eggs. The main issue with omnivorous strength athletes is the amount of animal products that they eat. Meal one, and he's already at 55 grams of fat, almost half of which is saturated. And he's ingested over 1,100 milligrams of cholesterol. Heart disease kills every third person in the West, and it's these non-essential nutrients that drive it. The new Dietary Guidelines for Americans has just been released, and it recommends limiting saturated fat and cholesterol as much as possible. That's code for stop eating animals. The USDA can't come out and directly say that because as well as advising on health, they're tasked with promoting agriculture. So when it comes to healthy foods, the information is clear. Eat more fruits and vegetables. But when it comes to unhealthy things to avoid, they choose to speak of nutrients instead of foods in order to confuse everyone. I would recommend to switch the eggs out for tofu and perhaps the bison for seitan. I get one and a half cups of cooked rice and don't overdo it with the rice. Unfortunately, you guys know that I like the rice, but uh, gotta keep myself honest. Carbohydrates are only four calories per gram, whereas fats, such as you'd find in Brian's animal products here, are nine calories per gram. By choosing healthier protein sources, he can eat more carbohydrate and feel and perform better. He's chosen white rice there. By sticking to whole grains, not only do you get much more fiber, but they're more nutritionally dense too. And where's the veggies? No wonder he's so damn hungry. You can add tons of water and fiber rich veggies to each meal. There's no need to be hungry during a weight loss diet. None at all. So one and a half cups of rice and I just kind of mash it up. And that is meal number one. Mmm, bland AF. I am very excited uh, when I get to eat my first meal. You must be really hungry. Come on, Brian, stop paying for people to drop chicks in a blender and slit bison's throats. Give a plant-based diet a try. You'll be fuller and healthier super fast. Now, I made that meal 1,122 calories. You'd think that an elite level athlete would have a massive handle on their nutrition, but it never ceases to amaze me how clueless many of them are. Champions despite their nutrition rather than because of it. Time for meal number two. So with this meal, I again get the uh, bison patties from Trifecta. And then while those are cooking, I get to measure out uh, my huge meal that's coming up. Do you get the feeling that's sarcasm too? I don't know why he puts himself through this anguish or if he's just playing the hero for this vlog, but were it me, I'd be eating a massive plate of broccoli, carrots, and mushrooms. The next thing that I get to eat is a uh, choice of fruit. Oh, okay, that's something. So today with this meal, I'm gonna go with blueberries. So I get one cup of blueberries. One cup? I'd eat double that and I'm half your size. Blueberries are about the most calorically dense berry of them all, at around 84 calories per cup. Whereas strawberries at the other end of the spectrum are only 49 calories per cup. So that would be a much better choice. Now I try to get every single one of these because like I said, I'm starving. Pick a different berry. I get to eat two, two rice cakes. Why? I get 10 ounces of bison. Jesus Christ, your poor arteries. So I'll get that measured out. And that is meal number two. Where's the beans? Where's the greens? Where's the whole grains? 
This is a death diet. Time for meal number three, and this is my pre-training meal. What I get is a protein shake, and I'm having the undefined nutrition persist iso. This is a whey isolate. Of course, you don't want a couple of extra calories from carbohydrate in there. Never mind the 720 calories worth of fat that you got in just your first two meals. But what's special about this is that we added probiotics and digestive enzymes. So for people that, that tend to have trouble with whey, this should set a lot better on their stomach. Or you could just eat a real food. Whole plant foods naturally contain probiotics and are loaded with prebiotics. Or choose a quality vegan protein supplement such as Vivo Life. 10% off with code HENCH10, link in the description. Give us your money. No, but seriously, if you're going to use a supplement, something like Vivo Life digests and absorbs perfectly and contains nothing but the best ingredients. It's organic, biofermented, and is third party tested for over 500 different contaminants. Let's talk through the rest of meal number three. So with the protein shake, I get a selection of fruit. So pre-training, I'm gonna go with a banana. Nice. And then on top of that, I get uh, two tablespoons of peanut butter. Being from the UK, I'm not familiar with that brand, but looking online, it appears to have at least a small amount of added sugars. And more worryingly, hydrogenated oils, which are not heart healthy. If you're gonna eat nut butters, choose whole nut butters, I say. Because I have to go train after this meal, I get to have two Rice Krispie treats. Rice Krispies treats. This sounds more like a child's snack rather than fuel for an elite level athlete. Brian, what are you doing? I'd smash in some dried fruits such as dates or raisins. They take up very little room in the gut, so perfect pre-workout. And they actually have some nutrition in them instead of being full of refined sugar and refined grain. The Rice Krispie Treats give me just under a extra 100 grams of carbs. Next time, maybe experiment with 150 grams of ooey, gooey, delicious medjool dates. You can thank me later. Okay, so a modicum of fruit in that meal, but no legumes, whole grains, or vegetables. And his omega-3 is virtually non-existent currently. I hope he addresses that by the end of the video. All right, guys, finished up training, and it is time for meal number four. So for this meal, switch it up and go with uh, shredded chicken. Instead of having bland mammal flesh yet again, he's having even blander bird flesh. What a delicious treat. Brian, get a lentil bolognese, chickpea curry, or mixed bean chili down your son. That's mixing it up. According to the Global Burden of Disease study, for every two tablespoons of legumes eaten daily, a person has an 8% drop in the risk of an early death. You are what you eat, so I swerve dead meat. I get 12 ounces of shredded chicken. A lot of people consider chicken breast to be a healthy meat, as if there is such a thing as healthy dead flesh. But here's another eight grams of saturates and 230 milligrams of cholesterol. Remember, cholesterol is a component of the outer wall of all muscle tissue cells. So as lean as you think any meat is, there's gonna to be tons of cholesterol in there. Other than its protein, chicken has no real redeeming features. It does have some very pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid, however, and I'm not seeing much in the way of omega-3 in Brian's diet to balance it out. Scoop out four ounces here. Asparagus. Four ounces, you'll be smashing in tons of that. Nutritious, delicious, and plenty of water and fiber to fill you up. Perfect. Wow, I cannot believe it is that concerned with such a minuscule amount of calorically deplete healthy vegetables. While not batting an eyelid at the thousand plus calories of animal fat thus far shown. The uh, last part of this meal is sweet potato fries I get. So um, this is, um, one bag of sweet potato fries. Sweet potatoes, awesome. A whole plant food replete with its fiber and nutritionally dense, especially in things like carotenoids and potassium. Deep fried though, not so great. There's nothing healthy about refined plant oils, especially when superheated. And oil is the single worst thing to try to diet on, the most calorically dense thing available. But hey, let's give the guy a break. At least there's a good amount of extremely healthy tubers in this meal. You needn't be starving, man. Switch out the fries for steamed sweet potato and add in some overt fats such as nuts, seeds, and avocado. And for God's sake, get some veggies in there. 
You could be in mountains of the stuff, increasing your health potential dramatically and slaying your hunger. Yeah, I uh, definitely enjoy that meal. It's a lot more volume. Now let that be a lesson to you. Get those veggies in, man. You could add in some low calorie fruits too. Meal number five, last meal of the day. So here's what I've got going. Bison burgers, 10 ounces. That's another eight and a half grams of saturates and 160 milligrams of cholesterol. With that, I get uh, another cup and a half of rice. That's amazing, a cup and a half of rice. You could add one and a half bags of Smart Pop popcorn. Greg Doucette, what are you doing here? Despite our obvious clash in terms of animal rights, I'm actually a huge fan of Greg's. I will say though, eating massive amounts of popcorn while being very satiating would give massive amounts of carcinogenic acrylamides. Anyways, get out of here, Greg. This is my video. And then along with that, I get a salad. So this is just kind of like a spring mix. <laughs> Greens have virtually no calories, fill you up like crazy, and have tons of amazing nutrition. They're packed with lots of lovely nitrates, helping us produce nitric oxide, dilating our blood vessels. And of course, they're extremely mineral dense with plenty of iron and calcium, etc. I add them to nearly every meal, and Brian could do likewise. Basically fill this bowl up, and then on top of that, I get uh, balsamic vinaigrette, so one serving of that. Again with the oil, I'd switch that out for a nut or seed butter, such as tahini. As you guys can see from following along, my calories are significantly down. Typically, I hang around, you know, nine to 10,000, maybe a little bit over that. That is at least a three and a half thousand calorie deficit, meaning at least a seven pound per week weight loss. Sheer madness, neither healthy nor sustainable. People spend years gathering excess weight and then won it all off yesterday, but it doesn't work like that. I would advocate for losing no more than 1% of total body weight per week if you wanna be successful long-term and not feel like death all week long. Okay, on to Brian's totals for the day. Around five and a half thousand calories, excessive for most, but I fear far too little for Brian at this stage. Net carbs, 409 grams. I'd have gone much lower in fat, smashed in tons more carbs, he'd have better energy and more nutritional density. There's a lot of refined sugar there coming from the junkie cereal bars and only 39 grams of fiber. To be fair, that's a lot for a non-vegan, but much more is required for optimal health. The more the better really, as long as it's well tolerated. Total fats, a whopping 245 grams only two grams of the anti-inflammatory omega-3 and 20 grams of pro-inflammatory omega-6. That's an unfavorable ratio of 10 to one. I would ditch the oils and add in ground flax and ground chia, hemp hearts and walnuts. 70 grams of saturated fat per day is obscene in terms of heart disease and all-cause mortality risk. Health authorities typically recommend to go as low as possible with cholesterol or limit it to 200 to 300 milligrams per day. Brian's intake is nearer 2,000 milligrams. I appreciate that previously health was not Brian's top concern. He was doing everything he thought may help him to be the world's strongest man. But he really needs to address his animal consumption now if he wants to be around for those boys that I can hear playing around in the background. Two grams of the trans fats shown here came from the animal products, the rest potentially from the fries. I say potentially, I don't believe most fries would have that. I just happened to pick a particular brand where that was an ingredient. Perhaps in other fries, that wouldn't be a thing. So take that with a grain of salt. However, trans fats are extremely bad for the heart. So just be aware that they are found naturally in animal products and can be added to processed foods. Protein wise, Brian got 417 grams. Of course, due to his inordinate mass, his punishing training regime, and the fact that he's cutting currently, his needs would be elevated far above your average person's. This doesn't stop excess protein being unhealthy though. I've two things to say about this. One, he doesn't need quite as much as that to still be optimal in terms of what he's trying to do. So I would cut that down, even if it's a little bit. And two, there's very little difference in terms of efficacy between protein sources, regardless of whether they come from a plant or an animal. 
Plant sources are, however, much healthier than animal ones. So I drop some of the meat and eggs and go for things like chickpeas, lentils, beans, tempeh, tofu, seitan, and textured vegetable protein. The only vitamin he's not reached his RDA for is vitamin D. Now he's not shown us his supplement regime, so possibly he'd address that there. Most weight training athletes are savvy enough to include this if they don't get adequate sunlight as it lowers sex hormone binding globulin, giving you more free testosterone. Someone of Brian's stature would need several times the RDA of a normal person in order to be optimal. This is best dosed via blood work. He doesn't have massive amounts of vitamin E or K. Again, I wonder because of his size if he might benefit from getting in a little bit more. Almonds, sunflower seeds and the like would see him getting much more vitamin E. And for vitamin K, just want to eat a little bit more greens. Minerals wise, calcium and iodine were his only deficiencies. By including more whole plant foods, Brian would have crushed his calcium needs. And in terms of iodine, just a little sprinkle of seaweed does it. Just half a teaspoon of dulse or arame flakes, or if you like sushi, one and a half sheets of nori would give you the 150 microgram minimum RDA. And now the big downfall, his sodium is at a whopping five and a half thousand milligrams. That is extremely excessive and not recommended for heart health, particularly taking into account the rest of his diet. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're going through your own transformation, Keep it up. Uh, just do it on a daily basis. Stay motivated, stay hungry. No thanks, I'll stay satiated by eating large amounts of legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Brian seems like a super nice guy, so I hope that one day he'll discover the benefits of a whole foods plant-based diet for himself. Now click this.